Greetings Ventures, this is Lauren, your Guild Advisor, and it's probably been some time since you've heard my voice, probably almost two weeks, and I'll explain a bit more on that later on in the video, but first let's go over all the updates that appeared in the Japanese livestream, as well as the pictures the official Twitter Damemo account has given us. So first of all, the game will be updated to version 9.1.2, and that actually should be updating overnight uh, tonight on Tuesday because this does say Wednesday JST which is Japanese standard time so tonight you'll be getting a update to download and then tomorrow most of that will be live so we'll be getting content up until the end of war game which is episode four of season two and with that we'll be getting new characters one of which I'm kind of excited for and there'll be a 48 hour pickup gotcha and there's a new familiar merger function happening very soon and then there's also going to be a Sunday only gacha ticket quest, which is kind of cool uh, for newer players and just players in general uh, with all the stuff that you'll be able to get through that. But let's go over all the stuff. Uh, first of all, we got the new story edition I was talking about earlier. We'll be going over episodes three and four of season two being added into the game. And with that, we're getting a new Migato and a new Ryu. Finally, it's been quite some time since we've seen a new Ryu. And... Just like the bell and eyes from the first banner for episodes 1 and 2 of season 2, uh, this is going to be a similar 1st, 4th, 7th, and 10th guaranteed 4-star banner. And we do have translations for the character skills. Uh, they're not 100% accurate, uh, but they're pretty close to what you would expect. And this is courtesy of Gailrai6212 from Discord. Now first of all, here's Ryu. She will be a physical attacker, as you can tell by the stats, with 1906 strength at maximum break, max hero ascension. And with that, her special arts is an AoE Ultra Thunder physical attack with an Ultra Unguard rate. And it will also reduce your enemies agility by 40% and increase your allies agility by 40% for one turn. Uh, that's kind of interesting. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure how useful that would be in uh, war games, let's say. Because a lot of times, uh, your war game usually ends before a special arts is used. But if uh, that turn that the special arts is used... Uh, pretty much all your units would be going uh, before your opponents if they're not going to be using fast attacks because that 40% agility buff is quite substantial. Uh, but the, the downer on reuse skills is that there are a lot of slow ones, so I'll go over them pretty quickly. Her first skill is an AoE fast, low thunder physical attack with a high critical rate and also reduces the strength, magic, and physical resistance of your enemies by 25% for 3 turns. It's kind of underwhelming because a lot of us just use characters like Krozo or Amid that can reduce strength and magic by a higher amount as well as agility so I'm not too sure how useful that skill is going to be in war games and then uh, her second skill is an AoE slow super thunder physical attack that removes uh, the damage received buffs for uh, all targets and single target which means any buffs your opponent have like let's say they use Galmus or Daphne who have buffs that increase your single target resistance and your AoE resistance uh, should be able to take those buffs off of enemies excluding assist skills of course. Now let's say you know what turns those skills are going to be used like in a familiar rush or just a big boss battle from a quest you'll be able to plan for that and use this skill because you know Ryu will take those buffs off at the end of the turn but as for war games, I'm not too sure how useful this is going to be because usually with physical attackers, you want them to be going as fast as possible to get those hits in. This is a slow attack, which means it won't happen until the very end of the turn. And when that does happen, if a person is using Daphne or Galmus, uh, their goal is to just solely use that move. So the AI would probably just make them use that same move again very close to the beginning of the next turn. So it's kind of useless. But we'll see how it goes. And then her third skill is a single target slow high thunder physical attack with a temporary strength boost. And it again removes those single target and AoE resistance buffs. It's just a single target version of her AoE skill. So unfortunately this for you is kind of underwhelming to me. Like maybe she's better than I think. But uh, it just looks very underwhelming. And of course I'm a fool and I'll pr probably try to plus 5 her because this is Ryu. And it's been quite some time since we seen a new one so i'm a sucker for you my favorite girl in damachi but it's kind of disappointing seeing these skills and then of course we have the new mikato she doesn't really have an outfit change it's the same thing but her using her gravity spell uh ryu 
is kind of the same outfit too, but I think this will actually be the first unit she has where she actually has the mask on, so that's the one difference, and of course with the two magic swords she's holding. But Mikito, it's it's the same thing. <laughs> but anyway, Mikito is a physical attacker, which is kind of strange because this version of Mikito like has a focus on her gravity spell, which is magic inherently, so it's kind of odd. But anyway, her special arts is an ultra AoE dark physical attack, and it will increase in damage by 80% if your enemy has a slow on them, and it also has the ultra unguard rate and will inflict slow. As for her combat skills, her first skill is a AoE fast low dark physical attack with an ultra uncounter rate, and it will increase the strength, agility, and dexterity of your allies by 25% for 3 turns. Her second skill is an AoE super dark physical attack with a temporary strength boost with an ultra uncounter rate and a 50% chance to slow. And her third skill is a single target high dark physical attack with an ultra unguard rate and a temporary strength boost and pretty much will guarantee that infliction of slow. Now as for that single target version of the spell which is usually intended for like single target boss fights, I'm not too sure how useful that's going to be because most bosses and enemies in general outside of PvP uh, have inherent uh, resistance to all ailments, so it'll be interesting to see if people like try to just switch a single target to take advantage of her slow, but I really doubt that. I'm pretty sure you're just going to be using single target to do single target damage. Now her special arts being stronger if your enemies are slowed is an interesting mechanic, uh, but like I said, most enemies in PvE are inherently resistant to ailments, so it'll be interesting to see if they make any encounters where you can actually take advantage of that skill because most of the time it's very hard to depend on the AI in war games to be like, okay, this these guys are slowed, so make Mikito use the special arts. Usually a DAI doesn't really do stuff in your favor when it comes to that. And also for her passive, she does an additional 80% on her counters if it is on a slowed enemy. So her stick seems to be slow an enemy and she does extra damage to them. Now let's quickly go over a new function called Familiar Merger. Now I'm not going to go over all this in depth, but basically uh, for people with uh, low populated familias like Pitsy members or less, you will be getting an option to uh, put your familia up for merger and then be able to accept requests for mergers. So two different familias can join their familias together and you'll be able to combine your rosters to get closer to that 30 uh, amount. So you'll have an easier time getting better scores and point totals for familiar ward games and familiar rush. Now this is really something that would be for people that are struggling to get 30 members. Uh, probably like aimed towards more casual people that don't really go out there on Discord and Reddit to actively look for members. So this will be helpful for those people that are just trying to get that 30 number. Uh, but are struggling to so it's an interesting feature and i guess it's a nice thing to have uh, but a lot of people uh, like me uh, have trouble uh, with people asking to join the familia and we just not having enough spots for those people but this is good for people that are in low populated familias and being able to merge familias together to get closer to that 30 amount so it's a nice quality of life feature for people that are kind of casual but want to fill up those familias. And we will also be getting 48 hour pickup gotchas. Now this is something that pertains to the US version of the game specifically. I know that EU had a launch recently. So if you are in the EU server, uh, you're not going to be able to get this pickup gotcha. But well, basically for these pickup gotchas, we'll be getting uh, 48 hour pickup gotcha banners for these individual characters and some of them will actually be buffed. Now I'm just going to quickly go over a few of these changes. I'm not going to go too in depth on them because there's a lot of them. Uh, with Elf Knight Ryu, they gave her heroic trial about two weeks ago and they didn't bother to unlock her ascension then but finally we're getting it so thank god. Uh, a lot of her skills are just being updated for damage to be more in line with the more recent characters. You can see Ultra Penetration added to her special arts, her middle skills being adjusted quite a bit more by minuscule amounts but being a bit more to current standards. And here you can see her Endurance, Agility, and Dexterity being boosted quite a bit. And oh they left the Japanese character in there, that, that probably means strength because they took strength off here at the top. But ha, I caught you, red handed. And Sparkle Princess Eyes will be getting here Ascension. She's actually going to have an element attached to her attacks now so she'll be a light character. 
As you can see, her skills are being buffed a bit from high base power to super base power. And then on her AoE skill, it will also remove a turn of physical resist buff if that's on the opponent. And then Elven Awakening Lafia will also get Hero Ascension unlocked and also uh, have some of those skills adjusted in damage, that being high to super and a chance to taunt. And then, uh, like the inverse of Eyes, uh, as she can reduce the buffs on a physical resistance, Lafia will reduce a buff duration on magic resistance. And Aki will also be getting Hero Ascension uh, with some damage modifiers as well, and some of the MP costs being adjusted. And there's a chance to seal on her AoE attack, and she's getting an ultra critical rate modifier on her single target attack. And then Fels, of all things, is actually going to get a buff. He's going to get a fast mid HP heal, so that's kind of cool having a healer with a fast heal. And it's actually quite decent because it's a mid HP heal. And then his AoE attack is actually going to have a physical resist and magic resist debuff of 20% for 3 turns, so it's nice that he's getting uh, some utility there. And then this is more interesting, like his uh, buff move that increases physical resist and ailment resist. It will also increase water resist and it's modified to boost all those by 25% for 4 turns. But that is the gist of the updates and again you can check this on the in-game menu on the update tab in the new section. And again, for US only, we'll be getting a gacha ticket quest every Sunday. If you clear this quest, you'll be able to get a two-star ticket by the looks of it. And it's a special two-star ticket where you, of course, drop on a general pool. And it also comes with a scratch. Well, if any of you are familiar with towards the start of the game, we got the scratch banners where you're, you can well for a character. And then it also scratches off uh, like a spot on a kind of like a lotto card and you'll get a random item and it's a similar thing here where uh, you do that quest on sunday you get your two star guaranteed gacha ticket with a scratch and you'll just be getting random items like here you can see cp items ascension fulna uh, cool stuff like that so it's kind of cool uh, you can look forward to every sunday because we'll be getting some extra stuff by way of the two star ticket maybe get lucky and get a four star character maybe get lucky with the scratch and get some useful resources and of course, we'll be getting another free 11 draw uh, tomorrow for the Asia Diamond MO first anniversary. So good luck on those draws. And again, this is for US only, unfortunately. And another US only thing is the Goddess Campanella rerun. And if you guys weren't here for when the event first launched, Goddess Campanella is basically an event based on the short story at the end of volume four of the light novels. And it was not animated in the anime for season one. Uh, but it's basically the origins of Hestia Familia when Hestia comes down and gets to Arario, learns about Familias, and you get to see Belle and Hestia meet for the first time and make that Familia. So kind of a cool event to see stuff, uh, see content adapted that the anime did not adapt. So that was the cool thing in Goddess Camp Manila. And there are some original things included that weren't in the short story too. So it's definitely an event to check out because it is technically canon. And this is the picture for Familiar Rush, and it should be starting uh, next week on Wednesday the 13th, so look forward to that, get ready. And here is the Asia Damamo first anniversary King Bundle, so it's another paid bundle. I know you guys are really excited to spend money on the game. And here you will get a Adventurer Prison Bond, you can use that to limit break any adventure that's not time limited. Uh, so that's kind of nice, and you get a two four star guaranteed 11 draw tickets and a standard 11 draw ticket and a lot of fauna and exilia so if you like spending money on the game that's for you us only and then record buster will actually be happening tomorrow night on d6 and we go against otaro and for eu folks uh, you'll be getting part two of the argonauts event and argo is a really nice character a lot of us still using today and this launched in japan and the united states around June July time for the second Japanese anniversary of the game so really good character and it's cool you get a free copy of them just for completing all the quests on very hards and then of course we'll be getting the Argo and Orna banner and the Krotso and Ariadne banner with that so you folks have something to look forward to there and just an overview of the upcoming schedule uh, tomorrow night on the 6th will be Record Buster and the Pay King Bundle will be added into the game 
as well as that fourth weekly 11 draw. And then, of course, the episode 33 and 34 of Bell's Story will be added along with Mikoto and Ryu's banner. We'll get the rerun of Goddess Campanella. The 48 hour pickup gacha will start with Sparkle Princess Eyes. And then Europe will be getting Argonaut Part 2. And then on the 7th will be the start of the next 48 hour pickup gacha, which is Aki. And then two days after that, because 48 hours, will be Elf Knight Ryu. And that is all the upcoming content coming in the near future. And like I said, I haven't made a video uh, for almost two weeks, and I apologize for that. I know I said I'd do that scripted, or start doing my scripted Season 2 cut content uh, really soon, and I just haven't been in the habit of it. I didn't even do my character analysis for the idle characters, because, uh, to be honest, uh, I've been kind of feeling out of the game and I think I'll be changing how I do some content but I'll talk more about that uh, in a future video tomorrow when I do my pulse for Ryu because even though she's kind of underwhelming as a new unit it's still Ryu so I will be pulling for trying to get her to the plus five because I'm a sucker for Ryu so I'll talk more about my future plans for the channel there but I also got Sword of Toria volume 10 today so uh, that'll be uh, my main focus for a bit because I'll be reading all of the volume and then doing my review on the volume and hopefully that review is up Friday or sometime over the weekend because I'm not sure how long it'll take me to read that book because it is about 300 pages long and then I have to go over notes, go over what I want to talk about and, and such but that'll be a process to go through. So again, I look forward to a video tomorrow when I do my review polls. I'll talk more about how I'm going to handle the channel from this point forward. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more Damachi content, follow me on Twitter and join my Discord, and as always, continue enjoying your time adventuring in and the dungeon. This is Lorne, your guild advisor, signing out.